Now that we've established a couple of different models of population growth, we're going to be shifting gears and looking at a different idea in population ecology called life history. And we'll entitle this next flowchart Life History 1. In this flowchart, we're going to be looking at several different strategies that organisms, especially those as a part of a population, play in order to play out this life history concept that we're going to be speaking about. But before we get into those strategies, we have to understand what the term actually means, life history and its definition. So we'll do the definition on the side here and use this as a working definition to build off and create some knowledge based off of this idea that we'll establish. In life history, we can define this term as ways in which organisms maximize, ways in which organisms, which is just going to be labeled ORGS, maximize reproduction while also ensuring survival. So maximize repro, but we also have to make sure while also ensuring survival. So a, a key theme of evolution and life itself should be popping up in your head. The idea of reproduction and survival, survival and reproduction, S plus R. Things that we've constantly been going over ever since we started talking about evolution, now we're moving forward to ecology. And we see that these two things play a major role still up until this point in the ec ecological sense of the terms. Specifically, this type of study of life history is all about looking at the trade-offs. And we're going to be looking at these trade-offs. Specifically, trade-offs are always between two things. And specifically, these two trade-offs are going to be between survival, whether or not you want to survive, and whether or not that trade-off is worth it in terms of reproduction. So trade-offs between survival and reproduction, just like we've constantly been saying in the past couple of lectures. But in order to figure out how we can maximize reproduction while also, while also ensuring our survival, we have to look at a couple of main variables. And there are three main variables to understand in terms of our life history working definition. These main variables are as follows. First of all, we have to understand the age at when we have our first reproduction, at first repro event. So if you have a reproduction at a very early age, that means you have a long time in your life history to continue reproduction. But let's say you have reproduction at a much later age, that means you have less time, thus less capability of reproducing, but maybe something in terms of your survival has traded off for that sort of switch. We'll get into that a little bit later. In addition, we have to look at the variable at how often an organism will reproduce. So that's a big idea here, is that your life history will be devo devoted to the fact that, yes, of course, the age at which you have your first reproduction, but let's say this, this could be absolutely irrelevant if you constantly are reproducing, if you have a high reproduction rate, and thus that is also a variable that's going to be a part in this trade-off scenario bet between survival and reproduction. Finally, it's not only how often, but how many as well. How many offspring are actually going to be a result of a successful reproduction event? How many offspring, we'll say, per repro? And so when we look at this, this repro, we call it an episode in ecology. When we look at this idea and these three variables, how do they play a role in the survival and reproduction of an organism? They are each going to independently and then cohesively work with each other and against each other to give us this idea of survival and reproduction trade-offs that we'll look at within these strategies. So, remember how we mentioned that life history is all about these strategies that organisms play in their ecological roles? Well, the strategies are mainly two uh, ideas and two types that are played in this life history. The first one is called a semel-paris str strategy. So it's called semel-paris strategy. And we'll define it as the following and then work off of that definition. A semel pair strategy is simply a strategy that involves reproduction in one single burst. So it's one single sort of inclusive all or none phenomenon, one single immense reproduction effort. So a lot of effort into one single immense repro effort. So it's one big flare, one big fling of reproduction in this organism's life history. That is a semelparous organism. This is usually seen in many insects, 
Many plants also will do this. Oftentimes we are uh, actually very annoyed by this fact because this is the pollen that's often seen in air that's due to a semilparous event in the plant's life history. And also many fish will also do this semilparous type of strategy in their life history. So insects, plants, and fish are three types of organisms that are seen uh, that do this. Um, but more specifically, instead of just saying that these are the organisms, why do semilparous of uh, life history events even happen? Well, this is specifically usually seen and done in species, uh, S double P, because we're talking about many different species, um, where the survival rate of the offspring is low. Survival rate of offspring is low. So done in species uh, where the survival rate of offspring that we're talking about um, is low. And that makes a lot of sense because what we're doing is we're doing many, many, many um, offspring that are going to be a result of this semilparous event because we know that most of these offspring are not going to survive. Thus, it makes sense to have one big reproductive effort to produce as much as we can in one single shot. Um, this is also very much tied, these strategies and life history are very, very much tied to the environment. Remember, ecology is all about this interaction between the living and the non-living, and it's also seen here in these semilparous strategies. When we have a highly variable, a highly variable, meaning a very unpredictable even, environment, we oftentimes will denote that with a semilparous strategy. Unpredictable environments will oftentimes invoke these semilparous one single immense reproductive efforts because you never know if the environment's going to be okay to even do this reproduction the next day. So you do one simple strong swing of reproduction to give us this life history strategy. And also, we will say that the adults in this strategy are also less likely to survive as compared to the other strategy, which we'll see. Less likely to survive, and because they're less likely to survive, because their offspring have a low survival rate, you do one single immense effort. It's an all or none sort of principle. You put all your eggs in one basket in this semilparous strategy. The other strategy that's also utilized in life history is the following, and we'll do this one down here. This strategy is called an iteroparous strategy, I-T-E-R-O, Paris strategy. And in this strategy, we are not going to have one single immense effort, but we're actually going to have reproduction occur over many times in this life history. The life history of this organism will promote many times this type of reproduction. This is actually seen in most vertebrates and this includes humans. Most vertebrates do this. Um, this is usually done in species uh, where the environment is less variable. Done in species when the ENV, which is our environment, is less variable. So this is because we have a, a little bit more stability. And thus, because we have more st stability, we have more opportunity. We have more ability to do this reproduction event over many times. In addition, in an Iteroparous life history, the adults are then, of course, going to be more likely to survive. Adults more likely to survive. Why? Well, because the environment is more stable, because the reproduction happens over many times, and because this interaction between the living and non-living, the environment and the organism, the living and non-living in that situation, we are, of course, going to have a less variable iteroparous strategy. Again, look at these variables and see how each of these is showing up again in both of these life strategies at their own rates. Finally, the last thing that happens in an Iteroparous strategy, you know how there was some positives and negatives of the Semilparous event? There is one major negative of the Iteroparous strategy, and it's a big, big thing that ecologists really like to study. It's the fact that there's an intense amount of competition, a very, very large amount of competition for resources in those organisms that exhibit this Iteroparous strategy. Why? Well, that's because reproduction happens many times. That means you're going to need many resources. And because you're going to need many resources, because most adults survive, you're going to have a lot of competition for those resources. Basic supply and demand in this Iteroparous strategy and the Semilparous strategy focuses on a different environmental contingency, an environmental resistance pattern. Finally, the last thing in this flowchart, the last idea um, is going to be based off of this Iteroparous strategy since it's a little bit more relevant to us. Um, it specifically involves the timing of reproduction. 
And remember, we had age at first reproduction as a variable. It hasn't come up yet, but now it's about to. The timing of reproduction of repro in, I'll just call it IT for iteroparis, I-T-E for iteroparis. Um, this is going to be a big idea here because there are, there are going to be two major trade-offs that we have to focus on. Um, and remember, the trade-offs are all about whether or not reproduction is necessary, whether or not survival is necessary. Same trade-offs will be seen in the iteroparis timing of reproduction strategy. What I mean by this is that let's say you're an iteroparis life history organism and you reproduce early in life. So we'll say early in life. Contrastingly, if you don't reproduce early in life, that means you reproduce, let's say, later in life. So those are two distinct of mutually exclusive events. They cannot happen at the same time. Either you do this or you do that. So they reproduce later in life or you reproduce early in life. The trade-off with each is different for that reason. The trade-off for this early in life reproduction is that you reduce your own chances of survival. Reduce own chances of of survival. So you're still developing, you still have some growth that needs to be done, let's say, but what's going to happen is because you need to do something like, we'll put this in parentheses, like parental care, very early in your life, you're going to reduce your own chances of survival. You're going to be, have to focus yourself on this parental care in your uh, trade-off is going to be that your own chances of survival will diminish because you reproduced early in life. Be, though you've reproduced early in life and you have more chances to reproduce, your chances of survival are going to be decreasing because you're going to have to involve yourself in some parental care for a very long time since you've reproduced very early on in your life cycle, let's say. Finally, in this later in life situation, though you're going to have more energy for yourself, so we'll say more capital E for energy for your own survival, for your own um, let's say growth, not even survival in this tr situation, uh, there's going to be a major, major sort of contingency here, a major sort of uh, trade-off, more energy for your own growth, but the big thing here is that there's less time for more reproduction, less time. Time is a non-living component that you have to focus on here, less time for more repro. So here you have a lot of time to reproduce because you reproduce early in life, early and often, let's say. Here you produce later in life, you become strong and fit on your own, uh, you become strong and fit on your own self because you've grown to a greater strength, let's say, because you have more energy devoted to yourself. But the thing is, you're going to have less energy possible to devote to your reproduction uh, offspring because of the fact that you invested in yourself. So this basic idea of trade-offs shows up time and time again in ecology. It's a great great example to see it in iteroparis organisms that exhibit the iteroparis life history. Keep in mind this definition, this idea of trade-offs. When we survive and when we reproduce, what are we trading off? How are we trading it off? And the two main strategies that we see.